spends a lot of time like that, practically under my chair. I guess she likes me. Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, and today we're going to make a scope height gauge. Now, I've never seen one any place, so I had to kind of figure it out on my own. And the purpose of a scope height gauge is to figure out how high the center of your scope is above the center of the bore of your rifle. And uh, so the pieces of it are, are this piece right here. This goes in the, in the bore. The reason it's removable is so I can make different pieces for different sized bores. After all, you want it to fit tight in there. There's this rod with measurements on it to know how high things are. There's this piece, which is your collar to read the graduations of the measurement. And this long piece, <clears throat> this is your standard cleaning kit rod. You put it in there so that it'll reach out to the scope and you can know if you're really in the center or not as far as the up and down area little spot on the back to read the, the size I don't usually show the, the product before we do the uh, video but this time I thought it would be just as you know just as well would be appropriate and uh, the thing turned out pretty good and the only change I'm going to make is I'm going to put a, a grub screw in there to push down against this rod so that it won't have any flexibility. <coughs> That'll make it even more accurate. Uh, and at the end of this video we're going to talk a little bit about drones. So depending on what you want to see, if you want to see how to make a, a scope uh, height gauge you watch the first part of the video. If you want to see how to uh, get a drone certification for commercial drone license, watch the last part of the video. If you just want to see a, or hear a redneck joke, go on past that. So, and when it when we get to the end of the video, if you liked it or if you didn't like it or if you're not sure, go ahead and push the like button. My likes are going down here lately, and I didn't even need them to go up. You know, that's the, that's where they're supposed to go. But right now we're going to start off and we're going to we're going to build the, the scope height gauge. When we finish that, we'll talk about the drones. Let's go. Well, the two trees are gone. A lot of it reduced to this mulch here that you see, which is <laughs> about six inches deep or more at least in some places. That was the first tree to go right there and the bigger pieces are kind of sliced up and laid out. I left a piece, two pieces sticking up about seven feet to tie off on a rope so that when the when I wanted to pull limbs of the other tree over so they didn't fall in the in the neighbor's yard, well I could pull them back towards the garage and that worked out real well. And there's the second tree. And of course all the big parts of him that are still left over. I guess probably this big piece here is still left over from the first tree. It was kind of an interesting thing because I come out here and I got the first tree down and then I filled up the wood chipper and left. And it rained for about three weeks, too muddy for back here for about three weeks. And then when I came back to start the thing up, well... I had left the gas valve open, the engine was full of oil, I mean, full of, oil, full of gasoline. So I had to take time out to change the oil and find an air filter and stuff like that. Interesting, things laying in the grass, I mean in the mulch here. But anyway, those two big crepe myrtles are gone now. Alright, back to my project. Okay, so now we need the, the upright piece here. And I had thought about using a piece of half inch drill rod, which I can't find, <laughs> so I won't. I'm going to use this piece of brass. I've cut it about five inches long. I'm going to square off the end. 
and thread it with a quarter twenty the same as that hole and assemble it and then mark it a little bit for uh, graduations on it and I'll put some of the graduations on it right here and in the lathe and some I'll do over there in the mill which I'm not a hundred percent certain exactly how I'm going to do it but we'll find out when I get there all right I cut the thread on here using a die and you know a die normally says on one side start from this side you can see that on there so I start from that side and then when I get through I flip it over As you can see it's sort of tapered going in this way and it's the regular size there and try to come up as close as I can so that it be threaded to the end sometimes it works better than others this time I'm gonna have to come back and put a little relief right there so it'll screw all the way tight against uh, my other piece there so we'll be back to that in a second I don't know if you can see it or not but I marked a, a one inch mark right there so I'll unscrew this piece and take a little sharp tool and I'll make a circle on this rod right at that spot and then I'll move another inch and another inch and another inch like that until uh, I got as far as I can go there and then I'll probably roll it over and continue it on up until I get right close to the end that way I can use this as a ruler to measure and I'll Put the I'm going to mark it an inch and tenths of an inch so I'll do that over on the uh, on the milling machine and uh, I I can you know increment it and then cut back and forth across it so we'll be back on that in just a second all right so using this uh, Mickey Mouse setup here I use this to mark off every inch along the, the rod there and uh, now that I've got the inches marked, all I have to do is take it over there and set it up in the mill and it'll be much easier to mark the tenth of inches with it considering it's got a, a DRO instead of just a, a dial indicator or a clock as they say in English speaking countries. So we'll move over to the little mill. What I'll be doing here is I'll run that center drill back and forth across every tenth of an inch to uh, well, to mark off the tenths of an inch. <laughs> and I'm using the, uh, the DRO. It's sitting on uh, 900 thousandths there, which is, it would have been on an even inch, I suppose, but I've moved it back. All right. And uh, I'll just 800, 700, 600, 500, you know, just like that, right down. And then all the way to the end. Okay. So where it's there it is. So let me get it set up and then I'll bring you guys right back. I believe that's as good as this thing's gonna focus. So we'll cut our first tenth mark. <laughs> Now that's just a little over five thousandths deep. I'm not sure if that's deep enough. It could be. We'll uh, we'll go with that for now. I think that's down deep enough. So I'm going to move it on to the next hundred thousandth mark. I re-zeroed the thing at this end. I'd zeroed it on this mark here. <laughs> and then it was one inch there and then declining. And I thought, well, <clears throat> that looked confusing. So I, I went ahead and zeroed it here. So now it's reading 200 thousandths for this next mark. <laughs> I think that looks 
pretty good so I'm gonna put you guys back to sleep so I can do all these because it's gonna take a while to do and then we'll bring you back when I've got the notches cut alright so I feel like this is going from the improbable on one end to the improbable on the other this is one inch above uh, the center line here so that would be one inch above the bore two inches three inches four inches five inches you know I think I've gone nothing's going to be closer to the bore than an inch I'm pretty sure and nothing's going to be higher than four inches for sure I don't think and that's just really some unusual thing but nevertheless there you are lined up I, I don't know why I thought I needed to line it up with the back but that's what I thought so that's why I did it now it's getting close to four o'clock the range closes about 530 so I've got to knock this off and go practice for an hour and then we will do the last piece maybe the last piece tomorrow well here we are it's the next day and uh, I figured it's a good time to get on with this according to the apocalyptic weather man uh, the Canada Express is going to blow through here in a little bit and bring high winds low temperatures and a thunderstorm or two so figured this is the next piece I'm going to slick up this side and slick up this side a little bit and then uh, we'll put a hole in it and it's going to hold the little indicating arm and well I know I'm not describing it very well so you'll just have to wait and see how it comes out so we're just going to do a little general surface smoothing here not there's not enough metal there to remove much the other way. The boss lady told me my compressor was still on and I told her, no, no, it's not on. <laughs> wrong again oh well it's the way life goes all right turn it around a little bit of smoothing on the other side the other side is not going to turn out as pretty but got that little hole in it and we're going to try to hide the hole instead of removing it because like I say I don't have enough don't have enough metal here for a real good job of beautification. There's the traditional YouTube chamfer on both uh, on both sides which always leaves a little ridge there anyway but it looks good now we'll take this guy over to the milling machine where it'll be much easier to drill a hole off center and you guys are going to sleep while I get things set up alright I've moved a tenth of an inch off center so that uh, the edge will be nearer to where I'm going to take the reading of uh, you know, the height and it'll give me plenty of room for a rod to go through the other direction so I'm going to try to drill a little hole here that you can see there's a hole in the center already and I'm drilling into the side of it kind of the edge so I need to make a pretty good hole so that when I drill through there it uh, doesn't slide down the hill you know what I mean I'm going to get just a slightly larger drill bit and poke a hole all the way through and then I'm going to get a half inch end mill and poke the hole through there and 
I don't know if I'm going to show you the eyes of that or not. It's not very interesting. Well, if I got to watch it, you might as well watch it too, right? Let's see if this will go straight. I could see deflection there, even though I had uh, started that center hole because it was still too much on the side there. But once I run that end mill through there, that'll straighten up quite a lot. So let me get this out and I caught it in and the end mill in it, and we'll do the next step. All right, so I got a half inch end mill, and even if whether it's a center cutting end mill or not, I've got a the center of this thing cut out with that drill bit so it's going to work just fine theoretically hopefully I got everything tight enough we'll give her a shot all right now we're not going to tell the boss lady that she was right and my compressor was turned on out here, are we? I mean, I trust you guys to keep quiet. Pierre, how about you? Pierre, yeah. Are you going to keep quiet? All right. Don't, don't tell the boss lady that she was right again. All right, we've got a hole right there. We want to put another hole over here. Which means I gotta roll it over. Okay? So, this being the guy that this thing's gonna go into, right here. So it should be close enough to the edge that I can see exactly what I don't have where you can see it. He goes on here, it should be close enough to the edge there that I can see what uh, what it's touching, and I don't know. That I need anything to hold it still because it doesn't seem like I do. Anyway, you can see that uh, I'm going to know from these edges some sort of an idea as to where I'm at. Now I'll have to uh, I'll have to make some allowance for the diameter of the uh, rod that I put through there. So, huh? We'll we'll uh, we'll get to that little bit in a minute. I had completely forgot about that. I was gonna make these marks based on offset for that rod, and I forgot. Okay, so we'll just have to add to the the reading for our, our to subtract from it for the for the size of the rod. All right, back to sleep. Okay, so I took an end mill and made myself a nice flat spot there to, to start drilling on. I'm going to take this tiny little center drill and make a little hole that uh, my drill bit can follow to stay straight. <coughs> uh, and I figured out the problem with uh, the offset in the measurement. There won't be one because I'm going to fix that. Excuse me. Those be my days for sneezing.
Okay, now <coughs> the rod that's going to go through there. Now I've got two of them. <coughs> Excuse me. One rod's two hundred and two thousandths, and the other one is two hundred and five thousandths. And I've got a drill bit here that's two hundred and one thousandth. And I'm going on the supposed uh, rule that drill bits always drill a bigger hole. So if it drills just a little bit bigger hole, I've got a good chance <coughs> of one of those rods fitting just right. So we'll see what we'll see. This is a, uh, a number seven drill bit. And it's, like I said, 201 thousandths are supposed to be. I guess that depends on the uh, manufacturing quality. I don't really like this little key because it, it never fits just really good. It needs to wobble out of there. Well, here we go, all the way through. Hopefully I figured right. Chips come out all by themselves. I don't think you really need a lot of chip clearing up and down stuff here. Well, the chips are just pouring out of it. Alright, there we go. There's the hole. And uh, now I'm going to cut a little slot. So that it can, uh, when you look at it, it'll be lined up dead on with these guys like it's supposed to be. So, let me get started on that. The cold front and the thunderstorm has arrived right on schedule. I think it's the first time my weatherman's been right in a while. It's a momentous occasion. Alright, that marks the uh, the dead center of this thing. I'll get an end mill and I'll slot it right up to the dead center and we'll be ready to go. I'll bring you guys awake at that time. Alright, so I got a 3 16 end mill and we're going to slot that little spot right there with it. And if it looks like I need a bigger slot, well then I'll move up to a bigger end mill. But we'll start off like this, just to be sure. All right, now then, I will uh, move this thing over and measure to make sure that's exactly dead center and if it is then I'm through okay well obviously AVE has left the gate open at the Canadian border or maybe Pierre did it and a lot of that nice cold Canadian air is coming in on us so it's a good thing we got this finished up and we can go in the house and apply it as you can see this end Right here, this goes in the bore, and this guy will measure the height, and he'll go way down there if it's a long ways away, and make certain you're in the center. And then you just look into this little groove here, make sure it's on camera. Uh, you look into the groove there, and see which one of these lines it lines up with, and that's your height. Let's go give it a try. All right, so here's the device. Now this. These two rods, these are out of cleaning kits. They're 
pretty much almost the same size as almost a standard thing I guess. We'll take our gauge, we'll insert it right in the bore, like that, and then we'll come right across here, this little rod, in the hopes of, uh, well if we need to, we can screw two of them together, if it's that far away. There we go. So I've got two of them screwed together here. I'll bring it up. And we'll come up to here, which is a little bit more. There we go. That's dead center. So now that I'll take it out of the bore, lay it over and read the size. That's one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, three and uh, six tenths. I think that's how it works. So I guess probably some of the secret of the next video will have leaked out in this one because you can see what's written over there. That was a Christmas present from the boss lady, and. I may demonstrate some of it here in just a second. All right, so there it is. That's how you measure it. You don't want a lot of wiggle in the rod here because that will throw you off, especially the further out you are. One of the changes I'm going to make, a little modification to this thing, I'm going to put a grub screw right in from the top, right dead center there so that it will push that rod right into the bottom of that groove and guarantee that it will be straight. That's uh, one little thing. If you can get this thing to fit, you know, within a thousandth of an inch, that's better. But I, I needed a number six drill and I didn't have it, so I, I used something a little bigger. And it's probably a little looser than it needs to be, but a little screw into the top to push down against that rod, that'll make it snap straight all the time and solve that little problem okay I guess now it's time to talk about uh, drones and the uh, and the law so let me change the camera orientation and we'll get started so if you're a regular viewer on my channel you know my granddaughter gave me a a DJI spark drone which is and as I can tell, a really nice high quality drone. It's got all kind of easy to control features, return home and all that. And so I was, I was pretty happy there. <laughs> and then I got into looking into the, the rules. It, you know, you open the case up and it says register with the FAA. So I go to register with the FAA and then I sort of dig in deeper and deeper. And it seems once you've registered as an amateur, drone pilot with the FAA, you still got to go ahead and uh, go through a whole bunch of rules. And you need to get this little application that says uh, before you fly that you can get from the FAA or there's two or three other programs that tell you, you know, when you crank up that program it, it runs on your te telephone, little application, and it determines if you're in a no-fly zone, you know, and there are all kind of different classes of zones, and if you're a certain distance from an airport where well, you have to call the uh, control tower and get permission to fly your drone. There's a, a lot of things to, to find out that that they don't tell you when you go down to the store to buy it or when you're looking at it online. They just tell you all the good stuff. They don't tell you the difficult stuff. Well, the difficult stuff is that if you want to put your drone videos on YouTube, then you've got to have a commercial pilot's license. Why? Because if your channel's monetized, you're going to get something. Even if it's just 10 cents, you're going to get paid for having your drone video on YouTube, and that makes it commercial. So that means you've got to have a commercial license. To get a commercial license, you have to take a test at some FAA testing center, and apparently they've got them all over the country. It'll cost you $150, and you take, I think, a 65-question test. Apparently, it's uh, a test that's not overly hard. The 
of course you got to study for it and in getting ready for this I discovered that uh, let me turn this over a little, little bit the other way so that you're not watching uh, I don't know I may have exceeded the free usage time or something but it's a about an hour and 50 minute video by a young couple and see the name is uh, Tony and Chelsea Northrup. Now you've heard of Grumman Northrup uh, Aviation. Well, I don't know if Mr. Northrup is part of that family or not, but it's an appropriate name to, you know, to go along with an FAA certification. His channel is all about drones, on and on and on about drones and how to do, mainly it's about photography, but he does photography using the drone. And of course, obviously, he's got a commercial uh, drone pilot's license. And if you go to his channel, and I'll put a link down in the doobly-doo down there, if I can remember, to his channel and, to, in fact, to his uh, video. It's a free guide to uh, uh, FAA, uh, what's the FAA Part 107 SUAS test. And he goes through all manner of the different questions and stuff, and he got links to study guides and and uh, sample test questions and things. So, if you're interested in getting the commercial license, and I'm I'm thinking about it, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. The $150 part is kind of discouraging, and you got to go back every two years, you know, for a recertification. So I don't know. It's not likely that, that a drone video I put on YouTube would ever earn 150 bucks, you know, <laughs> to pay back for the license. Of course, nothing I've done on YouTube ever pays back anyway, but that's neither here nor there. So, before you buy your drone and go putting videos on YouTube, stop and think about it. Now, as far as I know, right now the FAA hasn't bothered chasing down people who, who are putting drone videos on YouTube and check and see if they've got a license. But they could, you know. Suppose you uh, irritated your local government bureaucrat of some type or another and he knows you've got a drone, well, he could, he could insist that they check on you and find out if you've got a commercial license. I'm just saying, you know, I, I'm always one of those guys that figures they're out to get me, you know. <laughs> it's easy to be paranoid when they are out to get you, though. But anyway, that's that's probably all I've got to say about drones. Is that you know you, I've found a place to you can study to get the license, and it ought to work out pretty good if you know if you really want one. And uh, that's a warning to the folks that are putting drone videos on YouTube that you're supposed to have a commercial license if you get paid for any of your video. So let's go ahead and see if there's a Bubba joke. Bound to be one and. Well, the dog's willing to do the joke, we'll, we'll have one. So we don't, you know, neglect our friends up there in Minnesota. Uh, Ole's in there laying on his deathbed, you know, and he calls Lena in. He says, Lena, he says, when I'm dead, I want you to marry Sven Svensson. Then he says, Holy, are you sure you mean that? She says, I thought you always hated Sven. Holy says, yeah, he says, I still do. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.